get a picture in your mind of your best friend. Whether you've known them a short time or a long time, a friend since kindergarten, or a friend since you just moved to Tampa, get a picture of that person in your mind. Now think about a time when they really, really let you down. People can confuse you, infuriate you, really, really hurt you sometimes. And I have a motto that came to me just in the past three to five years that I want to share with you at the end. But I want to tell you, don't give up on people. And you've probably seen this with your relationship, that at some times it's really good, at some times you have a conflict, they do things you can't understand, you try to help them, they're not willing to take help. Just keep that in mind. In the story I'm about to tell you, if this were your friend, if you would hear what I heard or see what I saw, think about what you might do. My best friend I met in college in 1992, and it was the greatest meshing of personalities that I had ever had with a friend. We were randomly thrown together because where I went to school, they had four bedroom apartments all around town and you could rent just the bedroom. And so you might just randomly meet who the other people were that got put into the apartment with you. <clears throat> and Carrie got put into the apartment with me and we hit it off from the first instant. She had every cassette tape I'd ever wanted to own. <laughs> we sat up until 3 o'clock in the morning the first night listening to song after song after song and singing. She got me and I got her and it was so much fun. However, we were raised very differently and had very different interests in dating. At the time, I was in a long-term relationship with somebody from my hometown. And while it wasn't always perfect, it was fairly normal. Carrie, on the other hand, came from a rough family. Her dad left when she was three, and her mom had a series of very unsavory characters come through their house all the time, which meant that Carrie made really poor choices. This was new to me. I came from a town of 5,000. You just didn't see that kind of thing. Within the first week of living with Carrie, somebody slashed all four tires on her car. We were 22. This was new to me. But it was the guy she was seeing. The same guy she'd already loaned $6,000 to. She replaced that guy with Russ, who stole jewelry from our roommate and then pulled a knife in the apartment when we threatened to call the police. This didn't happen in my small town. I didn't understand it. And yet, we worked it out. Maybe we wouldn't talk for a while, maybe I'd go leave and stay with someone else, for friends for a while. But eventually, I moved away, just two years later, <clears throat> down to Arizona, and she moved to Green Bay. I'm hoping she'll get a new start. She's got a teaching job, she's got a career now. And then she decided to date Arthur. Arthur was married, had a baby on the way, had a prison record, and was very, very controlling. This was her choice of person to date for 10 years. It was really, really hard to be her best friend. I couldn't understand why anyone would do such a thing. If you've ever known someone who's in an abusive relationship, it is mind-boggling why they say and what they put up with. And I would hear stories. In 2000, one, I went to stay there for New Year's Eve. Hadn't been able to talk any sense into her over the phone. So I thought, let me go and see if we can spend some time together. She can remember what normal is, be back around somebody who she used to know before she lost her whole self inside this bad, bad relationship. I've rarely been so scared to be in their apartment because what was normal for them is not normal for any of us. And there were times when I thought I would have to leave and leave her there. 
because doors would slam and things would fly and hit the walls and behind closed bedroom doors. And the way that she had to act inside the realm of that apartment was shocking. And so when I finally got to leave, I was so glad. And I tried over the phone. I'm in Arizona. Tried and tried and tried to get her out of there. What do you need to get out of there? I would plead on the phone. I'll drop everything, rent a U-Haul, come and get you in the middle of the night. What needs to happen? No, I have a job here. I have a teaching job. I'm a coach. I couldn't do anything to get through to her. I threatened to tell her parents because they didn't know how bad things were. In the time between 2001 when I left and 2004, there were many times that we quit talking for a couple months at a time because I couldn't stand not being able to do anything. The stories I heard at that time were just heart-wrenching. He used to make her go stand outside on the balcony of their apartment at night, make it as a punishment. And yet I couldn't get her to leave. So in 2004, at about 1 o'clock in the morning, I got the call. And she said, if you're willing to have me, I'm ready to go. And he said, whatever you want, whatever you need, what needs to happen? And she said, I'm just going to get in the car and go. She's like, I don't have any money. I'm not taking anything with me because I can't risk loading it into the car. But I'm ready to go. And I said, I'll start driving from here. I was in Florida at the time. I said, you start driving from there. We'll meet wherever we meet. And so she left. She had no money. My sister just happens to live about two and a half hours from where she lives. She stopped at my sister's. And my sister gave her food and $200 in cash to make the drive. And she made it and arrived in 2004, August. The anniversary was just a couple days ago. And we were talking about how great that was, that she'd been able to make it away. So what I want to tell you is don't give up on people because she's now a tenured teacher up in Williston, about two hours north of here. And this week she's looking at buying her first house all by herself, making a decision. No guy involved. No guy's even seen the place. I asked her to promise me that no guy could ever live there unless she has a ring and a date. <laughs> but she's doing great, and it's so exciting. So one of the mottos that I used to have or that's come to me in the last couple of years was that everybody does the best they can every day. You don't have to understand it. You don't have to like it. It might be frustrating, but for whatever reason, that's the best they can manage that day. Whether it's self-esteem or stress or they haven't been pushed to the limit or they're not psychologically ready or they're waiting on something, everybody does the best they can every day. Keep that in mind and don't give up on people.